All right, Alabama's going to run a pick route right out of the gate. Didn't even realize this until obviously going back and watching film right here. But, you know, we're going to bring, believe it or not, our corner is going to come up and run the corner blitz. So basically you got your Z, you got your Y, you got your H, and you got your X. This is just like ace. Besides, your two inside receivers are both tight. So what they're doing right here is they're just going to run basically a, a hitch. You're probably going to get a backside. Um, let's see what we get out of the backside right here off of this. Yeah, it's just all hitches. So you got basically an ace set running all hitches. But I'm going to tell you this. This is offensive pass interference. Very first play from scrimmage. Now, we're going to bring, like I said, we're going to bring pressure from our corner to come down and uh, from the boundary side. So what we're trying to do is replace with CJ out to the flat and just stay over the top of it right here. But what I want you to do is I want you to watch this jabroni right here. On the very freaking first play from scrimmage, this is what they do to us. And watch what he does to CJ Allen right here. The ball is not even released yet, and watch what he's doing. The ball is being released right now. He's setting a screen on our linebacker to get out there. You believe they call that? Hell no, they don't call that shit. It's absolutely ridiculous, man. You've got to go both ways. We had three offensive pass interference calls in the game, and they don't call that BS right there. That's absolutely ludicrous. All right, this is just another play where I feel like we get out schemed because we've got a plus one. At, uh, and we've got a plus one at quarterback. We ran this with Stetson Bennett all the time. We get 81 back down in the box, and somehow, some way, Chambliss was going to be on him, man. But since he brings him back down, now he gets to tr truly run like a uh, like playing a defensive end. But all we're going to do right here is he's got him, man. The outside guy's got him, man. You got man and man. So realistically, these five and these two are to take care of the run. And what they do here is Dan Jackson gets screwed because he gets a crack block to Malachi, and he's running inside because he thinks he's got man-to-man -man and doesn't realize his guy's going to block. He's not running a route. So he draws him inside and ends up blocking the guy who needs to be out on the force right here. The other guy's going to get run out. Chambliss is going to get blocked. 52 pulls for nobody. He has to block absolutely nobody and this linebacker is not getting to the play on this from the back side that's Jalen Walker here so Raylan Wilson CJ Allen there's not anybody in here in fact uh, smile has been removed by the F back so you've got another linebacker removed and this is just great scheme I see now what we have here we've got the <clears throat> on this play right here this is just great scheme by Kalen DeBoer. He's got the F back removed, which removes one of our inside linebackers. We got man. We got man out here. We got man right here. So basically, we got these to take care of the run situation. We would have him in here if the F back was lined up in the back. But I want you to understand something. When you have a concept known as plus one, which means that basically if you take a half hat, and you look at it in that regard, quarterback could go either way. He's considered a half to each side. But because he has the ability to run the football, he becomes a plus one in this situation. They've done it with Stetson Bennett plenty of times. They bring him back down inside, which makes Shamless more of an inside guy. They're going to get a pin and pull. We're going to get a block. He's going to go down and crack him because he's got him, man, he sits inside of this thinking he's running a route and he ends up blocking really the force player that needs to be over the top of this who should be taking on 52. We've got no extra run support because he's run out. This is this is dead. Jalen Walker is the only person that can realistically get to Jalen Milrow on this play. Excuse me. And now we're out schemed because of what Dan Jackson does on this play, thinking that his guy's running a route. He's got to honor that. But that guy's running a route right into the force defender, who's the only guy who doesn't have anybody. <coughs> so what we got here is another situation with Kalen DeBoer. They've removed the F back, which takes one of our run players out of the box. He's got him man, man. You got man, you got man. So basically, you got these five and these two to take care of the run with your F back. He's locked on here to take care of this. You're going to get a pull. You're going to get a pin here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go block the force player. And what it does is it takes the man-to-man -man guy with him. So not only does he block his man guy by taking him into Malachi, Malachi can't get over the top of this. So he's getting blocked. He gets out schemed by the motion. We're getting blocked on the outside. Shamless stays blocked on the inside, and there's nobody for us out here. So we get blocked base. He's going to try to stretch, but he's screwed. We're pinned down inside. Now Malachi's blocked. Dan's going, oh, shit, I've got to get back outside now and replace. 
because now he's pinned up with this guy and it's too late by the time he realizes that he's being blocked out here 52 has nobody to block very similar to tcu when stetson bennett ran it in and there was nobody there we ran it on the short side of the field into the end zone against tcu against ohio state alabama takes the play out of our playbook and runs it to perfection and we've got nothing for this we can't get off a block for some odd reason out here to help down inside and you can see jalen trying to get from the backside linebacker position just can't get there it's a touchdown Okay, Bama's going to line up in sort of a bastard set right here, which, you know, I don't – it's hard to really say it's a bastard set, but it's ended up going to become in a bastard set in what I call this. Um, but what you have in this situation is you have a wide guy that's off the screen. You can't see him over here. Here's the number two receiver. Here's the number three receiver with the F back. And you've got the eight sitting here nubbed on this side. That's the reason why you see Dalen Everett sort of nubbed here. So you've got your free safety. you got your strong safety. You got your outside backer removed right here, but this is kind of what we've gone to now. And what I've noticed when we've got the jack in the game here, and you've got your um, you got your three technique, you've got your zero, and you've got your inside. This would be more of a four eye, I guess, right here. I'm assuming that's probably a four eye as well, and not a three technique. This is true mint. But if they didn't have this guy removed, we would actually have this other backer down in the box, and they would be bumped back to almost like a three three stack look. Um, with him being removed on the outside. So basically, this is what we started with. This is the difference of what we're doing defensively. I'm looking at zone across the boundary here. They basically, in a bastard set, you've got someone off the screen as the number one receiver. There's your number two receiver, number three. And then on this side, here's your number one with your F back. They're going to end up running basically a, a split zone look, but we're running RPO reading our apex defender right here. So what they're going to do is obviously push out and block. He's going to run basically a fly off of this. And what he's reading is to see if he sits, they're throwing. If he dives down inside, they're throwing. If he runs out with a fly, he's given on split zone right here. Now, this is something that we are resorting to now that I see a lot more of by taking the jack out and adding the nickel in the game. And it's something that we make an adjustment to. But we have one, two, three inside linebackers. Here's our jack with our three uh, down linemen. It basically should be a mint look. There should probably, that's gonna be a four, a four and a zero right there, four I, four I and a zero. And uh, this is something that we went to later on in the game because we would move this guy back down inside to let the, the nickel take care of the number two receiver. And that was an adjustment that we made later on. But right here, this is just an easy pitch and catch. Milrow's gonna catch and read Jalen. And because Jalen sits right here, he's reading that. He's going to fly off of that. Now they're going to throw it. And now you got Dan Jackson's got to come up and make a tackle from safety support. There's a missed tackle right there, but still just positive yardage for him. This is not too bad right here. We're in a cover one look. So you got man to man, man to man. Uh, this guy's locked up with your number two. He's going to end up having your number one. We're bringing Jalen. We're bringing this pressure right here. This backer is responsible for this F back. So it really leaves your strong safety free right here to be extra run support up in the box because, like I said, this is a cover one look right here. So because he's manned up, this is kind of your safety that's in zone. Your mic is going to take the rail route coming out of the backfield and be able to – let me get this back off here. All right, George is going to be in a cover one on this. Uh, your mic is going to be on the F back out of the backfield running the rail. You're going to be bringing pressure with these four guys. We're going to be in a cover one. So there's your free. They're locked up, locked up, locked up. He's going to take number two. Mike's going to take the F back out of the backfield. And he wants to throw the F back, but Mike gets over the top of that. So then what he's doing is looking at the meshers, which are going to be these guys coming across. You're going to see the mesh, and then he decides to run off of this. Um, it's not a bad job by us playing cover one right here, so we'll watch it play in motion. You're going to see number 81. And uh, number one here, I believe, is going to be running the mesh coming across. We got it covered up pretty well. And then they're running the exact same play that we run right there with the sit-down MOB. This is a skill design, I guess, that Kirby and them are going to in company because what they're doing is they're matching this, which is very unique. You're going to see him that's going to have the vertical half hash out. He's basically matched up to number two. 
he's going to sit wide and take anything that comes across to his side. So he's working basically flat this way to flat this way. So if a crosser comes across, that's what you have. Because right here, there induces left. And you have a right Ricky call right here. So you have a tight end here. You got an H here. They're going to end up running some crossers here. This becomes a big play on third and two. So many teams run this, but it's very unique in its design of how we set this up. Because what's going to happen is one of your backers is actually going to take one of the crossers man. He's got somebody man. He's going to be sitting on the crosser coming to this side. He's going to be sitting on the crosser coming to this side. And then you've got deep and you've got deep. So if you want to call it anything, it's a two safety high, maybe a cover two trap that you're doing with a match because this free safety is going to run with that number two and this backer is going to cross with what we have as well. The problem is, is that because they get to cross on the, on the mesh so quickly, he ends up, um, Dan Jackson just can't get there quick enough. But, you know, the one thing I'm seeing is what you've got out here. You know, they're, they're baiting him to throw it out there for the trap. He's sitting in good shape waiting on a crosser, but he has to honor this rail ride out of the backfield, so he can't sit inside to help Dan Jackson on this play, and they throw it right to where our weakness is at. And Dan does a good job of coming up and making a tackle, but unfortunately, it's right on the first down marker, and they get just enough to get the first down. There's something about this that's wrong to me because the jack is where we're screwed up here because what I see here is we're obviously, because the mic is removed, we've got to be in a cover one look. So we're here. We got a zone defender over the top corner sitting here. The uh, it looks like the nickel right here has got the F back, but because we have a plus one with Jalen Milrow, our Jack, who is the edge defender to the trips, that means we've called the strength into the boundary. So I don't know in this case scenario if if we're lined up wrong uh, because if we're not, we're screwed. I would do this to Georgia all day long every day if they're going to do this with a plus one. So what they're going to do is they're going to bring their, what I've got here is just trips right. This is just early left tight. So you got just trips open right here. They're going to bring the H in motion and bring him across. As he comes across, now this is where plus one comes into play. They're going to snap the football. And what you have here is I would assume he's probably an A-gap guy. He's your C-gap guy. He should be your B-gap guy for run option. He's going to be your pitch guy. But they're also having to read they're defenders. If he blocks, he's free. If he blocks, he's free. But you've got to honor pass first, unfortunately. And what they're doing up front is they're running power Q read. So what they're doing is they're reading this guy right here. They should not touch him. You're going to get a double team working to the backside. He should be working backside. He's going to gap hinge to make sure nothing crosses his face. He's stepping back off the snap. And the guard should actually step up inside and get to him. But because of there being no force here on these on this outside, he is your force defender, ladies and gentlemen. But so he the tight end art blocks is going to step up to the star. The F back is going to lead on the corner, which is a classic read. And what the quarterback doing is reading this guy right here. Okay, I'm going to take all this off so I can because I'm getting pissed the more I draw this. But um, quarterback is reading this in man on line of scrimmage. He should not be touched. Honestly, he's going to shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. These guys are going to block it like it's given on sweep every time. It's a simple block for them. It doesn't matter whether he pulls or whether he gives on the jet motion right here. But because our guy sits trying to take on the puller that's coming right here to flathead his ass, he's going to be an automatic give, and you've got a lead blocker onto a corner who is your pitch defender right here. You've got a tight end arc into your nickel defender right here, and you now got a linebacker who is chasing. And the reason why I know this is because when he went in motion, CJ switched off, and now you've got the jack and your mop backer on this trip side on the short side of the field trying to chase from this side now. So you got your jack running, and he's never going to get there. Your mic running across the – well, actually, your mic runs behind. Raylan runs across and ends up getting there late. And you just got a great play scheme by Alabama right here. This is an easy give. You read him all day long. And the guard doesn't even have to step up to anybody. There's nobody to step up to. So he just ends up blocking the end guy. Your tight end is arced up to your nickel. And now your F back is leading to your corner who's got to be your pitch defender. So looky here. There's your C-gap defender being blocked. There's your pitch player being blocked. And your free safety is having to come in, run support late, who's got zone defense. And he's got to run the alley. He don't make the play either. And Raylan getting there late from the mic backer position. All right, now we're going to line up in basically a cover four look. You're going to widen this guy out. This looks a little bit better that your jack now is to the field with your three down lineman here. So you've got your inside uh, shade. You basically got a two eye. He's head up a two. 
he's outside wide five. But now you got your jack to the wide side of the field because now they're in basically a cover two look. You got a two high look. But because I see this bail and where Julia, Julia is at on this as well, I would say this is a cover four. And you're going to have the uh, star is going to take the F back out of the backfield. And these two are going to pass up the crosser in this receiver right here, Kendrick Laws. He comes across on the uh, shallow route. But, you know, this is just a, a good job of a receiver adjusting to his quarterback throw. You know, and I'm really wondering in this situation as it's thrown, you know, if you look at where this ball is actually thrown to, I mean, it's so far to the inside. I mean, look at where this ball is at right now up in the – but, you know, Dooling's got to be able to get more inside on that hip, and he, he just loses him. His receiver makes a play to the ball, and he's not ready for that. He's used to chasing that hip straight, and that receiver makes an adjustment to the football, and he never adjusts with it. And that's why he makes the catch right there. And what we're going to bring is our X stunt. So we're going to walk down. Kristen's going to stay in B gap. We got C gap. He's going to be a B gap. He's going to be a C gap. He's going to cross to this A gap. He's going to come late and cross to this A gap. And we do exactly what we want to do is we occupy the center and the, and the guard by this crisscross deal right here. And because of that, we have a three technique, Kristen Miller, who comes through unblocked. Okay. So right now they're just an ace two by two set pistol. And we get exactly what we want with our blitz. And I told that we have to get home with our blitz. But yet, Kristen Miller comes through untouched. We get the F back going out in motion. Doesn't change anything. We're in zone to this. And now we're going to get the snap. And you can see the X stunt coming with Jalen coming here and him coming across. Now, Kristen Miller, when you get to him, what you've got to do is break down. Break down and make him make a decision. All right? Where your bad guys are at. I'm not really sure right here that I would really like to have this gap honestly, even though I know he could fit right here to that. But I'm still not liking Nazir on this either, being very lazy because he knows that this is set up for the X stunt, but he's not doing any help by working in his gap right here. But we have a free release, and we can't make this guy break down and at least slow down enough to get hands on. We are running as high as we possibly can right now at a kid that is so athletic it's not even funny, and he makes Kristen Miller look terrible because he's so high now he's reaching now he's got his gap everybody else is blocked it's like oh shit now we got to go make a play because our guy that needed to get home didn't get home so let's let our all-american safety right here who's facing up on four our all-american safety number 24 who has done so many great things for us that we need him now to make a tackle as an all area nation SEC, whatever it be, make a tackle on Jalen Milrow, and he looks probably the most unathletic I've ever seen him in my entire life trying to make an open field tackle right here. It's not even close, guys. But you know what? We talked about the fact that we have to get home on these plays and that Coach Schumann doesn't have something drawn up here that screws up their offensive scheme to block up front. You can't sit here and tell me that we don't have something schemed up well enough to cross, cross, screw up, Kristen Miller is in perfect position to make the play, all right? Can't do it. We get our All-American safety to come up and make a play, and he can't do it. And we let this guy run like he thinks he knows something, man. I don't understand. I know he is a good athlete, but we have good athletes to make tackles too. And unfortunately, he made us look like pudding on a lot of plays when he did this kind of stuff to us. It was really embarrassing and disheartening. This is just another well-designed play right here, man. They're just going to run zone to this. We're matched up in man, so we're stepping left. Everybody's stepping to climb for their zone, and they're going to end up blocking the end man on line of scrimmage because what they're going to do is block the backside read defender because realistically, because we don't have anybody out here in a wide nine over the top of this HY combo because we got a deuces left to this side, so there's two receivers to this side. You've got your two receivers on this side, so this would just be deuces left, Ricky. And, uh, you know, this is just another well-designed play. They're going to run zone left, and what they're going to do is influence and block the actual read defender, and Jalen's just going to pull off of this. It's a pretty simple play right here, but when you've got an athlete that can do this right here and be able to pull off of this, what I don't get right here is, is Malachi sees him coming at him. There's got to be something in him because you got one guy that's unblocked, so you got him that should be shooting the alley. He should be working from the inside. He should be blowing his ass up, keeping his outside shoulder free, and working his ass backwards to the play. 
I don't know what at this point in juncture that Malachi thinks that this is still a pass, but I just see a guy that's getting, you know, basically stood up. You've got one guy working to it. Mikhail's hurt. He, he's not 100%. He showed it all night long that he wasn't 100%. I am definitely, uh, you know, for him, want him to see him do well. But you've got, again, your All-American free safety that's playing outside as a force defender on this who's getting blocked by a chump and obviously doing a good job of it. And now we've got a free safety coming downhill one-on-one with four, and he's going to, you know, continue to work his way to the sideline on this. But still, again, I just – I, look, I watch this and just see a well-schemed play because you've got zone read. Typically in zone read, you read the end man on line of scrimmage. But since he's down, basically head up in a six technique, this becomes your read defender. So what a lot of teams used to do is they would bring this guy from this side. So you would have a back that's over here, and he would split, and they would run you know, the zone left look right here, just like they're doing. But this split back, instead of blocking that read defender because he squeezes down so much that for a pull – by your quarterback, this split back would just come out here and now block this guy. And he's kind of cloudy clear. He's not seen. But what Alabama does is they just say, screw it. We don't give a shit. We ain't going to put him over here. We're just going to line his ass up here, and we're just going to have him block now. We're going to watch and see what we get right here by this and see if we have anybody that's going to be able to force from that position. Hell, I'd pull it too right here. I w- there's no way that there's a chance in hell that they're going to be able to get to this. But, again, you've got Dan Jackson coming downhill. That's got to try to get to that. Mikhail's being blocked. Try to get off the block. It's too late. And your only defender out here, Malachi Starks, can't get off 45's block well enough to get to Jalen Milrow on this play for him to get another additional about seven or eight yards before he gets out of bounds right there. Again, I'm going to sit here and preach to the nth degree about just our want to. I mean, they're just going to run base zone right here. So, so what you're going to get is them stepping out to this play. Um, because we're going to hand it on a zone, you end up getting, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I drew that wrong. <clears throat> this is just want to right here. They're running base zone right. You're going to get the post. They're going to be working into this double team right here. Nazir Stackhouse gets driven out. He's getting worked out a little bit as well. You know, Shamless is staying blocked. C.J. Allen fits the gap and sits right here. But really what I'm looking at right now is Jalen Walker has got to fit this cloudy clear. As this ball is snapped and you've got all this, what are you doing, Jalen Walker? Why are you not fitting cloudy clear right there? Now, there's no reason why you're standing in the end zone. you got Malachi to help you on the inside. Shamless is sitting here. Y'all should be working both in these two positions right here. Why are you sitting in the end zone, son? You need to be up fitting in this gap right off his ass and blowing his ass up as he cuts back on this A-gap defense right here, on this A-gap run right here. But instead, you sit there and wait on him to come to you. And when he comes to you, he's going to deliver the blow right up in there. And he hits you right in the chin with it, and that's what you deserve. You know, I don't know who we've got for pitch because what's going to happen is we're going to end up getting our um, safety coming down to take care of this number two receiver that's going to be right here. He's on the number one receiver. We're going to end up having Dalen come down. He'll end up being on the tight end. Free safety kind of just wiggles to the middle of the field. He's your zone defender in this. So basically what we've got here for this uh, uh, counter trade that's about to take place, all right, you're going to be getting everybody blocking down, double teaming, trying to work to this backside, and oh, hell yeah, he gets blocked and doesn't get off the block. You're going to get the center blocking back on this three technique. The guard is going to pull and kick him out. And then he is just stepping out wide to influence. There's nothing he's going to do. He's going to come across in motion, and that's who the safety comes down and gets right here on this play. And what I want you to watch right here in this play is I want you to watch our play side backer because here's what should happen. If he takes on the double team, he makes a pile right here. He squeezes the down, and he should be blowing up this guard to make this running back get it off counter trade to bounce. And if he bounces it correctly, we should be fitting off that bounce right here. He should take the inside gap off of this double team and work in getting off this tackle. He should be fitting outside. And I want you to watch what, excuse me, I want you to watch what Smile does right here. I want you to watch this guy right here. Okay. Coming across, they're going to take him now. Okay, guard pulls. There's the kick. Now, Smile, where did I just tell you he needed to fit? I think that Smile, it could be C.J. or Raylan. I don't know. They all look kind of the same right here. I can't tell by number. I don't think that is Smile, but whoever that is, that may be Raylan. I want you to watch. You know, realistically, they didn't wrong shoulder this very well, so there's still a little bit of a gap here. But honestly, if he fits right there, he should be fitting to the backside backer that's fitting. So where should he fit? You would think he would fit on this side if it's wrong shouldered correctly. But watch what he does. 
He just sticks his head up in there. Now that tackle's got the down block up to the backside backer. He sticks his ass in the same. It's like he tried to take his head and shove it up his ass crack. And now the running back has nothing to do because the tackle that pulls the wrap, he don't have to do anything because the guy he's supposed to block, he let our own edge defender, our own C-gap player block him, and now he's bounced it. Now guess what? This one-on-one out here that we're supposed to be man-on-man on hips, they're blocking perimeter, and they're doing a hell of a job of it out here. We've got nobody to get there, and they've gashed us again on a run play, man. This is just pathetic across the board. All right. So right here, we're going to be basically running a cover four match. So we're going to be bailing out, bailing out, bailing out, bailing out. Everybody's in zone. Uh, we're working to the flat. We got the hook curl. We got the hook curl. He's going to be sitting in the flat to this side. So we've got everything covered almost like a 4-4 four -four look right here. Uh, but you just got a three-down lineman look that's being pressured. And I'm just going to show you, you know, Ryan Williams gets Dalen on this right here. But basically, he's pushing Dalen into his, uh, into his actual cut. So he's working his cushion to flip his hips. And as soon as he flips his hip like he's running this post, he runs a post stop and sits there. And we have all the time in the world to throw this because we're getting no pressure up front. We're bringing one backer plus the three down lineman on the X stunt. They pick it up. We've got no swing and pecker even close. Now the jack on this side is matching up with the F back coming out of the backfield. The nickel is matching up with the tight end that's on this side. And we're running just a high zone cover four. But right now you can see that Dalen's being pushed on his post. As soon as he pushes on that post, Ryan sets down and it's a timing route right to him. It's a beautiful throw and catch. And you've got Dalen on his hips opening, thinking he's going to get the post. He's got to respect the post. And now he's got to make the tackle. And he doesn't even do that. Janelle Guerrero comes back to make it. I'm going to let this pan around, but basically show you what we get right here. We get we bring six-man pressure on this, but what they do out of this situation is they're running this out of empty. So we're in basically a cover four match with our uh, free safety in the middle of the field. So we're, you know, the way I look at this is we're matching up in cover one across the board. But because we're in empty, the only player that we have, because this defender right here is actually on the number two receiver, we actually have another defender out there on the number one to, um, def receiver. And this is the closest person that we have to the number three receiver. This is just pitch and catch, guys, because that we don't have anything, obviously, for this situation. When I watched this live, I thought they threw to where our whole defender came from on the blitz. But if I back this up right before the snap, you're going to see – that there's there's nothing there right now where we're setting up with kj bolden this number three receiver that back as you can see we're in empty he just runs a five yard hitch there's nobody there the other two are over the top of those two receivers this is the closest guy we've got right here we're running some type it looks like a rabbit package but i see terry ingham dawkins standing up in this situation with two bigs here i think if I'm not mistaken that's damon and we're going to bring blitz pressure with both of our running backs here on this x stunt and they pick it up but still, though, throwing catch right there with KJ over the top of it, I mean, I would do that all the way down the field on us because we don't have anything that can handle that situation with what we were trying to run right there. This just adds injury to insult, honestly. I was just going to back it up here and pause this. We're going to get just motion across and make it look like zone um, with split zone. And what we're going to get out of this is him go to the read defender so he actually could pull off of this and follow this guy. But he decides to give it on zone. But this is what's so funny. We decide to run an X stunt into this. So Shamless is going to come across and be the B gap. Our three technique is going to cross over into uh, C gap. And, you know, because we're in, it looks like in a man to man match right here, he's got him and he's got him, man. I'm looking at what's happening from here now because of Shamless having to come across. That would mean he would be the one to be outside of this to get this because the zone is not really meant to bounce. But against Georgia, by God, they make it bounce. I don't know how in the hell we get it to do that, but it just it's it's amazing what we do. So what I'm sitting here seeing with the switch, because obviously the linebackers are switching up on the motion, so now he's free off of this. But I want you to watch the X, but I want to watch the backer here. This backer has got to be smart, and he's in a good spot right here to fit this. But Shamless is a B-gap defender. He's your C-gap defender. He's got to be able to put his foot in the ground and get over the top. But now he's being blocked by a 275-pound center, all right, and our only pitch guy is basically Dalen Everett, and he's got to come up and lay the lumber right here, and all he does is duck his head on this guy, 
and it just looks really bad. I would rather see him do like he did against Kentucky and wrap this guy up. It's Justice Haynes from Blessed Trinity, and now he delivers the shot instead of the defensive back delivering it back to him. Just still getting the edge. When we have a position player that can take care of the zone, we get an X done out of this. Everybody else is in man. Here's our pitch guy. I'm actually wanting to watch too. Let's see what we have. Oh, yeah, because the safety's got to move due to the motion, so he's in the middle of the field. But still, though, I mean, we're realizing we've got run situation. He has no person to take care of on this situation. So where is he at? Oh, he's being cracked by the Z receiver, so he has to replace. I wonder if he got a crack call right there to Malachi getting cracked as well. But still, just like I said, every little small injury to insult, we're getting it right now. You know, I'd run this play again, too, if this is how they're going to line up. What they end up doing is running trips into the boundary. We're going to get a move call right here to put the tight end back over here to the left. But we're still not going to switch this right now because all we have to this side, and we're showing this basically just like we did a while ago, we're going to read the end man on line of scrimmage. So we got three stand-ups. We got our jack on this side. We've got the trips. They're going to switch the motion. You got your safety move down inside this is a goal line type defense where we're trying to man up on everybody here. So as this guy goes in motion, they're going to end up doing a switch off. But all they're going to do is run that read power again. All he's got to do is read that in man on the line of scrimmage. And because he sits, I would hand it off to you. You've got three guys, and these are going to take care of all three. He is never going to get there. All you've got to do is block him, outrun him. This is a very simple play. and They ran it a while ago for perfection. Again, you guard. I mean, in this case, if – you know, even if he wanted to pull right here because we've got pullers taking care of this, they should be blocking it like power. The guards pull into the play side backer. Jalen can shift, 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 and follow this up inside as well. But hell, he doesn't have to because we don't have this defense very well. This is being out-schemed right now by their offense completely. This is just a replay because you have a plus one at quarterback where he could pull and follow. And honestly, he could have pulled and followed right here too because 77 could have went and blocked him and he would have been in for the end zone. I don't know if Malachi even gets to him right here. But we're reading him. It's the reason why he's not being blocked. So all we've got to do right here is 81 is going to step off like he did last time and arc up to the second level. Your F back's going to take care of your only flat – you know, your pitch defender that's out here because you're in a goal line situation. And this is just a run to the end zone. Another simple play running Q power read and handing it on the jet back. And he's outside because Dan Jackson just can't do it all right there to force pitch and get outside to the wide. <laughs> so what do you know how we've got this fixed all of a sudden now in the uh, fourth quarter is now it's fixed. Now all of a sudden we have the actual Jack to the side because they're going to run the trips open again with a tight end who's going to influence up. They're going to read the end man on line of scrimmage. You're going to bring this guy across in motion, and you've seen him score a touchdown off this. They've had a big runner because he's running out here. They basically should be blocking down to the back side, and you've got the – excuse me, the guard is going to pull a kick. You've got the uh, – this guy's being red. He's working actually to pull – You know, we've run this play all night long with the Jack sitting over here. They've run this play three times for success, and he's given it all three times. Now they're going to bring the motion, but all of a sudden something's different. The Jack's not sitting here. They finally have moved him onto the side where he honestly needs to be at to the tight trip concept. And now what happens because of this, now you're reading this guy. So what you should be doing is getting this, working up to this. You should be getting this post. You should be working this back. Actually, this guard is the one that's pulling. He should be pulling to play side. He should be fitting. He should be fitting. He's going to step out to block him. He should be free. He should be working to the top. But right here, because of this situation now, we've got the outside taken care of on this because we actually have a jack defender freaking sitting in C-gap working this guy out so he can't get a free release up. So guess what happens on this? Because we're flying to this now, guess what he should do? Pull. But when he pulls, now we've got the backside pursuit of Tyrion Ingram Dawkins coming up to make the tackle right here with also your linebacker there. This is a great job by 93 coming off of this, but this is also an adjustment that I've watched here is taking place in the fourth quarter with eight minutes to go in the game. They have run this play all night long with the Jack sitting over here. And they've had success, success, success because you are outnumbered to a plus one quarterback who can pull for power but also give it on the jet back. 
So in this case scenario, they're like, okay, we've made an adjustment. Now let's put the jack play side. Let's stretch this, make him pull. And I'd rather have that right there. Thank you. It's a nice that we finally make an adjustment. On this play right here, we've got a deuces left with a Ricky tight on this side. We're running basically a cover four match. So you're looking at zone working to the flat. He's going to be a hook curl defender. This guy's reading through number two. What they do with the number one and the corner is run him right at this to kind of create a sort of a face shield. He's going to push inside and get on the out route for the intermediate honey hole route. And it's a really simple throw and catch if it's timed up very well. Jalen Milrow does a great job of timing it up, stepping it into it. They influence with this right here to shield off his cut. You can see he's over the top of it. It's a well-thrown out route right there. <laughs> 